here in the American Samoa National Marine Sanctuary System, which is the largest in the United States, we had the opportunity and the responsibility to communicate with as many people as we can. We all depend on the quality of that ocean for the quality of our lives. I'm just grateful to National Marine Sanctuaries that allow me the opportunity to come to Samoa and to dive there with Jean-Michel Cousteau and Dr. Sylvia Earle. We traveled in a boat to get to a place away from where most people are. And we found absolutely magnificent corals. Big plate corals. Lovely variations on the theme. And good coral cover. And the first dive was in a fairly protected area and the corals were still in good shape. They were healthy. And I looked for the fish. The one thing that I found missing, really not much in the way of of what I expected, no groupers, no snappers, no sharks, no barracuda, not even very many little fish. That's cause for concern, but it's also cause for hope because it's an area that is protected and the basic structure is there. And there wasn't an awful lot of fish, but you know, then again, it could be just the area that we were in. Uh, but basically, when I saw those reefs, I wish we had those reefs in Hawaii. I wish that we had protected them like Samoa has. We in Hawaii have enormous amount of learning to do to get back to the place that's going to be worth it to our children, primarily in the urban setting. With care and with time, it can recover. I'm confident that it will. People here really are taking to heart the importance of of getting back to the ocean. We also did another dive, which unfortunately uh, reminded us that we are still using the ocean as a garbage can. And a lot of stuff that we disposed of or that is blown by the wind and ends up in the ocean, whether it's uh, fabric or bottles and so on, is affecting the coral reef. The second dive that I had here <laughs> was also very instructive because it was closer to where people live and has been subjected to a lot of what people do with the ocean. They throw things in the ocean. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like diving on the city dump in a way. But the good news is that in spite of the fact that there were cans and bottles and old tires and old fishing line and pieces of cloth and heaven knows what. It was just like a cross section of things that people don't want that they throw away. They think it's away when they throw it in the ocean. And in spite of that, here are these little fish setting up housekeeping <laughs> in the bottles, on the cans, all over the place. I, I found one bottle that was totally encrusted by coral. I, I tried to loosen it, and it was totally cemented in place. Nature was healing our mistakes. That stuff in the ocean, um, if we chose to take a weekend or two weekends, we could clean that whole place up. And so there is the potential in that particular site to help all of us look at the simplicity of doing something as a single human being or a community uh, to come together and restore that place. And in the end, once you achieve that, that we all feel goodness for what we did to our home. So that's all there. It's the gift to be waiting. And we need to learn to stop disposing of all these resources the way we're doing it today. Garbage is the wrong word. We need to recycle all of this. It has a value. Let's not forget that everything is connected. So we need to protect that environment as much as we can and capture everything before it reaches the ocean.
I think of what it's going to be like 50 years out in the future and what the kids of today who will be out there will think about us. They'll either salute us for taking action while there still was time, or they will be really cross for not doing so because we know. It's not as if we're ignorant. We know. And this is the moment to become heroes for everything, everyone who follow.